I would pop, say generally the American pop culture definitely has great influence on the German pop culture. But in a way that's kind of a pity because uh, the Germans you know, have good ideas too and um, most of the fans in Germany are so busy imitating the Americans. And um, we are really the only ones, at least as far as I know, who, who don't do that. On their second album, Zen Zucht, Rammstein continued to work in the same disciplined way as before, utilizing strict rules and structures in the construction of each song. Each is based on a specific pattern or procedure, usually starting with a strong guitar riff. The basic music is produced around this framework before Till takes home a four-track demo in order to work on the lyrics. The lyrics are always inspired by the music. A hard, sharp riff generating hard, sharp words, a softer riff getting a softer lyrical treatment. At this point, guitarist Paul Landers sits down with Till to flesh out the words, changing lines here and there, adjusting the guitar part to fit and so on. Then the whole band convene in the rehearsal room and work out the song again from scratch, experimenting with it, twisting it into new shapes and new directions. An utterly exhaustive, demanding process, and in a sense one that goes on forever, that continues each time the song is performed. Each Rammstein track is fluid, unstable, an ongoing work in progress. Once the song is recorded, all six attend the mixing process, and afterwards discuss what they liked and disliked. In many cases, they will then go back and play and record the song again and again until they are happy with it. An extremely time-consuming process, obviously, but Rammstein are nothing if not perfectionists. They are also a democratic unit, although their decisions are rarely unanimous. All, however, were of the view that Zenzucht, which means hunger or longing, was a step on from the Herzlied. Released in the autumn of 1997, they felt that the music had become more tender, sensitive and delicate, while Till had begun singing properly instead of just barking and chanting. Indeed, opening with the quavering Arabic wail of the title track, co-credited to Richard Kusper's old group Orgasm Death gimmick, Zenzucht immediately sounds bigger, more confident and polished than its predecessor. The same elements are in place, the industrial techno rhythms, the crunching metallic guitar and eerie keyboards, the soft loud dynamics, but with more of a sense of space and power. Till's vocals have improved, sounding less hammy than on Hertz Elite, while the band gel together behind him like never before. The whistling riff of Engel follows, invoking Ennio Morricone's haunting spaghetti western soundtracks. It's a genius contrast with Rammstein's patented Storm und Drang and the addition of angelic female vocals on the bridge, courtesy of Bobo, provide yet more counterpoint to make this easily the band's most commercially accessible and addictive song yet. Lyrically, it questions the attractiveness of everlasting life in heaven, suggesting that the angels, alone in fear, must question why they are forced to slowly fade away forever. God damn not an angel when I die, Heaven must be hell in the sky. Tear, meaning beast, asks where the line is drawn between man and animal, drawing on themes of incest, betrayal and revenge to suggest that the two can never be separated. The crunch of the guitar is broken up by a sinuous synth hook that wouldn't be out of place on a Madonna record. Bish Strafa Mish, or Punish Me, meanwhile comes on like some unholy hybrid of Faith No More and Depeche Mode. Till switching from guttural grunt to operatic baritone to high ballad voice to great effect on this hymn to sexual masochism. Pure heavy metal for the dance floor is provided with du hast, meaning you hate. Its insistent chorus of ascending bass vocal set against a descending female choir, recalling Leonard Cohen's First We Take Manhattan. The lyrics apparently rely on a play on words that is almost impossible to translate from the German but it seems to question the possibility of fidelity and upholding the marriage vows. Burke Dish, or Bend Down, is a superior rewrite of Der Meister, with a claustrophobic whip-crack guitars ricocheting between shiny metal walls of synthesizer, lyrically a somewhat comic invocation of sexual sadism, the inverse of Bish Strafa Mish submissiveness. 
An ominous drone of keyboards and looped muffled moaning sounds signal the arrival of Spiel mit mir. Till initially sings in his high, sweet voice again, before plucked strings come in like a bouquet of barbed wire to herald the return of the voice of doom. Appropriately so, as this is a song of childhood innocence inadvertently corrupted, touching once more on the theme of incest. The title translates as Play With Me, a brother and sister share a bed. They begin touching each other and exploring each other's bodies. My brother helps me now and then so that I may sleep again. The song is non-judgmental, no one is being abused, but once more a taboo is broken. Till is in romantic balladeer voice again on clavier or piano as he sings over plucked guitars and skittering compressed beats before sheet metal guitars raise the chorus to operatic heights. A dark tale of beauty, temptation and finally murder, there are echoes of Zeman, yet once again the effect is stronger and more confident. Der Alterman, the old man, overlays driving guitars with a brooding synth riff and a hymn-like chorus that suits what is essentially a fable of age, fear, failure and loneliness. Another industrial techno stomper is Eifersucht, or Jealousy, with its stuttering air-punching chorus and sampled laughter. Again, there are echoes of Depeche Mode, if they ever dared to rock this hard. Finally, there is Kuss Mich, Kiss Me, a tale of rampant nymphomania, that is, of a woman addicted to sex, yet unable to gain real pleasure from it or to feel real love. Choppy, storm-tossed guitars tussle with a synthesised torrent of garbled, distorted vocals over a solid bass drum rhythm bass. It's a creepy, claustrophobic oral evocation of waggling tongues, wet lips, groping, grasping fingers and all manner of physical unpleasantness. To date, Zen Zucht stands as the definitive Rammstein record. Containing two of their best-known tracks, it expands and enlarges upon the essence of their debut and perfects the harsh anthemic sound of the band. Zen Zucht was Rammstein, but where could they go from here? <laughs> 